Okay, good boy. Stay. So the down stay, uh -uh. leave it, good boy. And the sit stay are not over for the dog until we return around and release them. Okay, so what that teaches you is you can say, okay, from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, wherever you want, the dog will never ever get up until you return around and release them. So what that does, that just incorporates a lot of consistency with the sit and stay. Because the dog understands, hey, no matter what is going on and what I hear, what anyone's doing, I know, hey, I don't move yet until they come all the way around and then release me, okay? So what we're starting to do, stay, is we're gonna do our sit and stay. Very good. Stay. So we'll do that maybe 30, 40 seconds, and then I'll come straight in. Stay. Good boy. Come around, focus on the tree. Pull my hand back. Stay. Step out, and I'll continue my sit and stay. Okay? And then once I get to the end, so let's on 90 seconds or so, then I'll do another return. Okay, return around them and then release them. Okay, but you want to throw in, and this all be in the notes somewhere. You want to throw in a couple returns every sit and stay. Okay. Because you don't want him thinking, hey, every time you come around, I'm getting up. Because then he, every time you come in a little closer, he's like, oh, here we go, right? Um, so stay. What we use the treats for during the sit and stay is just motivate the dog to continue to do it. But quite quickly, it'll come to the point the dog's doing the entire thing just for that that praise and affection for the release. Okay. Very good. Down. <laughs> Down. Very good. What'd you do? You didn't let him take it? You didn't let him get it from you? No. Oh. Never. Until he goes down on the oh, uh -uh. All the way down. Yep. So he's working and he can't get it, so then he goes down to get it. Yep. Okay. And when you see that frustration where he kind of tags in mm -hmm. and comes out, that's him just kind of having a poor attitude about the exercise. Mm -hmm. Down. So when you see him like that, we're gonna ice the exercise. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's just the Sit. attention span is so short. No, it's the it's the he's he's resenting the structure. Oh, okay. Good. Stay. So it's like you know, you know what? I don't want to do it. That's what he's, that's what he's saying. Okay, well, guess what? You still have to do it. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Right. So what we do is we obviously we lure with the tree. We give him that healthy option. Like, hey, do it on your own. We're going to let you. Boom. You see that? How he looks away? Like, he knows there's something over there. Mm -hmm. That's all him. Just, no, I don't want to. So I usually give him maybe two or three chances to do it. Down. Very good. Oh. Mm. Stay. So what that's called is called verbal placement. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -uh, leave it. That's it, good. So we give them kind of that, I mean, in, in the early stages, there's no verbal, but essentially what happens is we give them the verbal chance. Okay, they don't take it, boom, placement. Uh -huh. They literally uh -huh. place them into it. Uh -huh. Okay, so what it teaches him is like, hey, no matter what I'm feeling or what I'm doing, I realize over time that I don't have a choice, so I might as well just, just do it. And that's how you acquire just well-trained dog. Because no matter what he's feeling or what's going on, he still has to do it. Because you realize, hey, there's just no choice. Good boy. Stay. Hello. Good boy. 
Okay. Sit. Remember, as dramatic as it looks, doesn't doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt at all. I'm not pulling hard. I'm just keeping my hand mm -hmm. steady. Look at his tail yeah. wagging. He's yeah. happy. He's not hurting with any pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it also teaches him, like, hey, I just don't, no matter what I'm doing, I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. don't have a choice. Good boy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to walk him now. 